everybody, this is Anders Nystrom, the guitar player of Caledonia, and you're watching Loud TV. Cheers. Vexation, internal void. TV guys with uh, Anders or Black Hain from Catalonia. Cheers. What's up? Everything's cool. Happy to be here talking with you guys. You are drinking water? Uh, Finnish water. <laughs> but you are not no. Finnish. Yeah. Uh, Finnish water is the best. On tour, it yeah. might help you a lot. But uh, right now, this is just some kind of uh, water from the Alps. All right. Yes. Of course, let's introduce the new album. This one, Dead and Kings. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, what a pleasure to, to have a, an ear on it. And right. uh, actually, uh, yeah, in the vein of uh, the previous one, we can say that. Very us. much so. I would agree. Yeah. So what's the meaning, actually, of uh, Dead and Kings? Dead and Kings uh, would, be, uh, would be us. It would be Catatonia. This is how we see a little bit what what's been going on, you know, um, through these uh, last 20 years. Uh, if you think about how our success has been, it's not been maybe the, the, the best, you know. Some people ask me even like, are you still in that band? What, what, nothing's going on, what are you doing, you know, why don't you cut your hair and get a job and get a real career or something like that. But I say, no, this is what I do, this is what I've been doing for 20 years and I'm not gonna stop and uh, I don't care if you see it as a dead end. Because I'd rather be the king in the dead end than a slave in this big free world, you know. Mm -hmm. so that's the whole concept of the title, and it just fits very well. It also, also yeah, there's there's a, one other thing of looking at it. It's um, you know how we uh, have a tradition to uh, to make our titles uh, a little bit twist, mm -hmm. you know, with a negative word and a positive word like Viva Emptiness and the Great Cold Distance, mm. so, uh, and the Night's New Day as well. So uh, we just felt like, we, let's keep this tradition. And uh, it has a great ring to it when you just say it, you know. Say because it, say it. Yeah. <laughs> Dead and kings, you know. That's a good ring to it. Um, because kings are often not in a dead end, actually. Exactly. They rule the world, they rule the kingdom, but I'd rather rule a dead end than not be a king in the world. So. This is how like uh, the previous album, um, I would say the, the Catania is always a, a bit of sweet, no? Mm -hmm. Another contradiction, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, it's again, uh, yeah. <laughs> a bit of sweet because, uh, you know, it's not so easy to enter your world. Mm. Uh, maybe this one is um, easier than the previous one. You think, yeah? Mm -hmm. Because the, the previous one, I must admit that uh, it was a bit difficult. Took a long time. Yeah, mm. took a long time, mm. but. Um, now, as it's maybe the, the second part uh, with this album, uh, it's maybe a bit uh, easier. Mm -hmm. so. I, think, I think you have a point there. I think the people who took a long time with uh, the last album might be more ready for this album, yeah. So it's easier to access this new album. If, as, I also don't think that if, if people come into this album as their first album, it might be as hard again. This album, I know that the people we played it for, they told me that they, uh, they do find some stuff by ever listening. Uh, there was a Swedish journalist who said it was, uh, uh, quote, boring as fuck for five listenings. And then when, when he had listened to ten times, he said it might be the album of the year. And that's a contrast right mm -hmm. there. So I encourage everybody to listen at least ten times then. Yeah. Yes. Me and Jonas being the main songwriters, uh, it's not it's not like it working. Like, you know, we we don't sit down in front of an album and, and plan the whole thing. Uh, we do discuss uh, a, a bit, of course, but it's more the whole vibe of the album, like the atmosphere and what color we see and everything. And that color is always what we bring to Travis Smith later to design and blah blah blah. But that's later. Uh, but what we do is basically just we, we close the outside world when we write and record the album and we just follow our instinct 
totally. And uh, we don't care if it's right or wrong. This is, this is for you guys to decide later when the album is done. But uh, we couldn't uh, write w with knowing that uh, we have to please people. It, it, it's, it would be a sellout for us. We do have to please ourselves only. Uh, and uh, we are, you know, if, we, if we're in the studio for two years, then we're doing, a, you know, still working on it. Mm -hmm. When we come out, we are done. So, uh, so are you pleased? I'm very pleased. This album was, we were in the studio for uh, many months, uh, you know, we, we were in the studio for uh, half a year, but writing and recording, yeah. you know, yeah. but it's a long time, it's a long time, so uh, I can't wait to, you know, well, I have gotten out of there now, but <laughs> can't wait to go out on the road and do the second part of it, which is, you know, communicating with the people and see how the songs will uh, be live and uh, what people think, you know. So, I'm excited. Is it uh, something like uh, an orgasm when you when you sell your album when you <laughs> finally release an album? Well, I would say it's like uh, the feeling of probably letting your child move out of your home because you've been taking care of it in every way, and then all of a sudden it's ready to leave, mm -hmm. and you just say bye, wish you a great time, call me sometime, you know, come back. Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> so the child is well prepared. Yeah, I'm very well prepared. <laughs> Everything. Uh, the lyrics are pretty m more. Uh, we talked about the lyrics. Uh, I even wrote one song uh, myself. I, I don't write too much of the lyrics, but if I want to write maybe one song per album, I do it. You know, if I feel I need to do it, so I wrote one song uh, called "Undo You." This is my lyric. Um, that particular song uh, is about uh, someone that uh, it goes very bad for you in life. It goes downwards and uh, the minute or the moment you actually start to improve and things get better for you, you, uh, uh, you get removed from earth uh, anyway by, by death, mm. like an irony. So this is what I write about, those kind of moments up there. Like it doesn't matter if you changed your life around because you were killed anyway. Mm. So that's the topic on that one. But uh, most of the topics on the album, it's, it's not a concept album or anything, but there is a red thread in the, in the way that Jonas is always describing like the same kind of thing. It's always the dark things, you know, uh, uh, but it's more and more abstract. Uh, it's more going away from the storytelling and more just putting into abstract things and uh, you might not be able to really know what the songs are about uh, first but if you f get a little bit of an explanation then it all comes together immediately but in an abstract way so I, I think this this album maybe de demands a little bit more from, from the listener as well to, uh, to uh, find out it's, it's not just there like a menu of a, of a dinner mm. it's uh, more than that yeah. So, as we said, uh, you are really fair, fair to music direction, fair to the people around you, mm. like David Castillo, mm. Travis Smith. So, the, the, t the team is built. And, uh, exactly, and you know, why fix it if it ain't broken, the classic one. Uh, we like these people, they are uh, easy to work with, they under most of all, they understand Catatonia's concept. We have tried to work with some people sometimes uh, that didn't understand it. And then you're in for a compromise immediately. And we don't want to compromise with the band, you know. For us, the albums are so important because they are, um, they are your vision. They're gonna uh, be there when you're not there anymore. They're gonna outlast your whole lifetime, you know. When I'm gone, the album's still there. So it ne needs to be what we wanted it to be and not just someone else's uh, product or vision. So with the help of these people, we become this team that can do this. And Travis Smith on the on this artwork, uh, that and Keynes, um, so of course a bit uh, strange, a bit mm. uh, something, you Supposed know. Supposed to be surreal. Surreal. Yeah, yeah. Like the previous one, you know, I like the, 
the the red little red parts mm. and so now there's yeah there's color something like gray blue or I don't know yeah we, we wanted this very icy mix like uh, a lot of white but a lot of frosty white mixed with some polluted gray and this stark black contrast to it all of that into one and I think it's exactly what it is it's very bleak it actually looks like something from uh, Chernobyl in Russia or something. This is, was our aim the whole time. And uh, I mean, I love this cover. Look at it. It's beautiful. It's strange. It's everything we wanted. We also are playing again with a bird, which we are known for. Uh, we had a bird, a dead bird even, uh, already back on the Brain of the Day, our second album, 96. Yeah. So we're taking this a little bit back and doing something new with it now. And we also have birds all the time coming and going in the lyrics. There's a lot of call on the birds going on, so it's uh, something we... You know, the, the bird can be a symbol for death or a, a bad omen as well, so mm. it fits, fits us very well. It's like a Hitchcock movie. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we sh yeah, exactly. That, that, that movie would be a good video for one of the songs. <laughs> so Sully so is the, is the, is the guest vocal yeah. of the second song. As you, you said, the one you are looking for is not here. Uh, so how was the how was the deal with her? Mm -hmm. She's uh, the singer of uh, the gathering. The gathering these days, yeah, exactly. She's Norwegian. Yeah, so we can speak the same language, and this is uh, how our friendship started. Really, we we played with the gathering a couple of times in Europe. And we started talking and, you know, she, she's a lovely woman and she has a really lovely voice. And we just, you know, talked about like, maybe we can do something in the future. And uh, when I heard this song, I said, I heard the perfect parts for, for uh, someone like Celia to, to uh, call her with Jonas vocals on. Mm. And we gave her a call and she was so in for it. And let's do it. Easy as that. I love the result. It's perfect. So, it even sucks? And uh, plus uh, two, two other songs. Two bonus songs, yeah. Two bonus songs on the limited edition. Mm -hmm. So what are the songs? Or uh, they're great. <laughs> one of them is actually one of my favorite on the album. Uh, it's called Second. It could be a, even a hit song. It's a little bit too dark, maybe, to be a hit song. But it's a very strong Catatonia song. There is no real reason why it's not on the album, other than it didn't uh, fit the flow of the tracklist. I hate putting the tracklist together because yeah. it's, uh, it's difficult. It's very difficult. Mm. You, you like all the songs, but they have to be at the right place. And I changed this a thousand times before I made the final one. Eleven children. <laughs> Eleven children. Who's first in line? Oh, I promised you last night. Oh, you have been naughty. You're going in the back. No, like this. By the way, what are the the kindest words that you have heard from uh, fans? The kindest words? Uh, well, the, recently, I, I mean, from a friend, uh, actually Michael from Opus, uh, we always play each other the albums and stuff, and he said, I, I'm always interested in, you know, excited to hear, what's your favorite song? Uh, what do you, did you think? And he, he said he, he couldn't uh, tell me of his favorite song, but he said there's not one bad song on the album. And that's uh, amazing, isn't it, you know? That means all the children can <laughs> leave. <laughs> Dead and Kings is the new Catalonia album to release uh, in August. August 27th, week. Europe, August 28th, America. Yeah. Thank you, Anders. Thank you, Jan. And uh, of course, see you on tour. November. My